Hey, in this tutorial we are going to learn what is Canon GS and how to create a basic setup that can evolve into a big project like a browser game for instance. That said, you are required to have a basic knowledge of 3GS to follow along, so if you are not familiar with the library, make sure to watch the 3GS guide on my channel, link in the description. So what is Canon GS? Simply said, Canon GS is a lightweight JavaScript library to simulate real-world physics. It is a physics engine that is made to be paired with other libraries in order to imitate real-world phenomena like gravity, friction, collision, inertia, etc. So now that we understand why we need this library, let's see how it works. In order to create an object that behaves the same way it would do if it was in real-world, we need to go through four steps. The first one is the creation of a physics world. We are basically introducing the physics laws to the 3GS scene. The second step is the creation of a mesh. It could be a box, a sphere, a 3D model or any visual entity that you can think of. And Canon GS has nothing to do with this step. It's the role of the 3D library that you are using. In our case it's going to be 3GS. The next step is the creation of a transparent entity referred to as body, which is affected by the physics phenomena such as gravity, and this is handled by Canon GS, same as the first step. The fourth and final step is to merge the mesh with the physics body. Now let's put the steps we've just learned into practice. As you can see, I have a basic 3GS template where I created a box, a sphere, and a plane, which I will uncomment when needed. And that gives us this empty scene which is going to be the field of our experimentations. Having said that, let's introduce the physics wall to this scene. First and foremost, we need to install Canon GS by typing the following command npm install Canon ES. The next thing we need to do is to import the library. Then we need to create an instance of the world class. The constructor method of this class takes a configuration object in which we can specify some properties and one of them is gravity. The value of this property must be a vector 3 based on which the direction and the acceleration of the gravity are set. In real world the gravitational acceleration on earth is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared. I set it to negative 9.81 here to make objects go to the negative direction of the y-axis which means to the bottom side of the scene. Next we are going to introduce time to the physics world. As you know we can't speak of acceleration in movement without time. So here we are setting a step of 1 by 60 which is enough in our case but keep in mind that lowering this value increases the precision if you need to but with the cost of resource consumption because that will require more computations. And with that done, now we have a basic Canon GS setup. Now let's implement the steps I've talked about earlier to add some objects to the scene. So the first step is the creation of the physics world, which we've just did. The next step is the creation of the mesh, and to do that I'll just uncomment this chunk of 3GS code. Now we need to create a body for the plane mesh. To do that we are going to create an instance of the body class which constructor takes a configuration object. One of the properties of a body instance represents the shape of the body to match the geometry of the mesh created with 3JS. Since we are going to set this plane as a ground we are going to set the value of this property to a plane instance from Canon and this will create an infinite ground Actually, I'll get back to some details regarding this in a moment. Then we have to add this body to the canon world. Now, as you can see, nothing has changed in the scene because we still have another step to do which is the fusion of the mesh with the physics body and to do that we need to add these two lines. Position copy sets and keeps updating the position of the 3GS mesh by copying the position from the Canon GS body. On the other hand, Quaternion copy sets and keeps updating the orientation of the 3GS mesh by copying the orientation from the Canon GS body. That done, if we take a look, we still can't see any change which is not exactly what we want. 
Actually, the result we should be seeing right now is the mesh falling down because if you remember, our world has gravity and thus the object should be moving to the bottom side of the scene. Having said that, to solve this problem we need to set a mass to the body of this mesh because in reality if something doesn't have a mass it won't be affected by gravity. The default mass of a body is set to zero so not setting a value to this property is same as setting it to zero. A body with a mass of zero is referred to as a static body and we can set that as a type instead of using the mass property. In Canon GS we have three types of bodies which are dynamic, static, and kinematic, but we'll leave that for another video. Again, since the type of this body is static, which means the mass is zero, nothing has changed. Now, let's set a value greater than zero to the mass property and see what will happen. And there we go, the plane falls down. So since we are using this object as a ground, we are going to set its type to static so it won't move. The second thing we'll do is to rotate the plane mesh and as you can see I used cannon to rotate it instead of 3 and again that's because the mesh orientation will be copied from the body. And doing that now we have a ground that is ready to have objects on top of it. Now let's create a box mesh by uncommenting these few lines. The next thing we are going to do is to create a body for this mesh, so here we'll set the mass to 1 kg and the value of the shape property to a new instance of the Canon Box class. The constructor of this class needs to have a VEC3 argument that represents the dimensions of the box body, keep in mind though that these values have to be half the ones we set to the box geometry in 3JS in order for them to have the same size. Next, we are going to add the body to the world, and of course, we need to merge it with the mesh. Looking at the result, there are two things to notice. The first one is the collision between the ground and the box, which is handled by Canon GS automatically. The second thing is the jump of the box at the beginning, which happens because we didn't position the box, neither the ground, which means that they are both at the same position by default. So, to prevent that from happening, we need to reposition the box by adding the position property and set its value with a VIC3 instance. Now, let's add a sphere by uncommenting this part and then do the exact same steps we did to add a body to the box. The only difference here is that we are going to set an instance of the sphere class as a value to the shape property and two here is the radius of the body which is the same as the radius set to the geometry of the mesh. And then again we need to merge the mesh with the body. And there we go. As you see the box goes outside the plane but doesn't fall because as I said earlier when I created the plane instance as the shape of the ground body, this type of shape is infinite so if we want to create a limit to this ground we simply need to use a box instance as shape instead of plane. And here again the x and y values should be half the ones used to create the geometry to match the sizes of the body in the mesh and we can make it as thin as possible by setting a value close to zero to the z coordinate and that's it.
Notice that when the sphere falls on the plane, it starts moving with a constant speed and even if we had a bigger plane, you'd see that the speed would remain constant and that's not how things work in real life because on Earth we have the air resistance that gradually slows down objects' movements until they completely stop. We can do that with Canon GS by setting a value between 0 and 1 to the linear damping property of the body. Now you see that the sphere seems to be more affected by its mass and the air resistance, therefore have more realistic looking movement. Another thing that I think you should know is object's rotation. Again, same as positioning using the rotation methods from the mesh is wrong. Instead, we need to rotate the physics body from which the mesh copies the amount of rotation done. So first, let's get the square away from the sphere. Now, to rotate a body, we need to call the set method from the angular velocity property and choose the axis around which the rotation should be done. And the value here refers to the speed of rotation, aka velocity. In addition to that, quite a bit similar to what we did with the sphere, we can slow down the rotation of the body over time by setting a value between 0 and 1 to the angular damping property. The last thing we are going to discover in this tutorial is the interaction between bodies. So, as you've seen, collision between bodies happens automatically. However, the result of the collision should not always be the same because we have other factors to determine the movement of an object in its speed when it gets in contact with another object. To have control over how bodies interact with each other, Canon GS provides materials. That said, a material in Canon GS is different from a material in 3GS because the former one is invisible, same as a body, it is there to provide information on how the body should react when it gets in contact with another material that covers another body. Meanwhile, a material in 3GS is something visual that provides information about the look of an object. Let's bring back the X coordinate of the box to 1 so we can see how it will move when it gets in contact with the ground. A good example of what I've been trying to explain is to make the box slippery once on top of the ground. To do that we need to create a material for the ground by making an instance of the material class. The next thing we need to do is to pass it as a value to the material property within the ground body configuration object. Next we need to create another material for the box body. Then we need to create an instance of the contact material class. The first two arguments of the constructor must be the two materials and the third is an optional object and this is where we specify what should happen when the two materials get in contact. So, as I said, we want to make the box look slippery, which means that the friction between it and the ground has to be so low, so here we'll just set the friction to zero. The next and final step is to add this contact material to the wall by calling the add contact material method. And now, as you can see, the box slips out of the ground like a bar of soap. And of course, we can try different values, which gives us different results. Another example we can do using materials is to make the sphere bounce like a ball. To do that we need to repeat the exact same steps, so we'll create a material for the sphere, then we'll create a contact material, and this time we don't need friction but restitution. This property represents the partial return of the body to a previous position. And finally, we need to add this contact material to the wall.
Make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.